Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about what to do if you were never able to join a IT company. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a response to another video that I made about what juniors can do if they find themselves working alone in a company where they don't get any mentorship. And the short version of that is that when you are completely alone, you will just find that there are a lot of things that you may not figure out by yourself. And you will also take longer to progress as opposed to if you had someone who was helping you out. Now, for someone who's been working for this amount of years, the person who asked this question in essence had a slight story behind it stating that it was never possible for this individual to join a real IT company, but he is today working as a self-taught developer and wanted some feedback on the impact of such, such a situation. And what I told them is practically the same thing I'm going to tell you. It's very important for you guys to understand that being self-taught does not mean worse. It means that you have had a different path of learning. Now, there is a key element that is important here. The reason why you might get the sensation that some developers have this, that, that we have this notion of self-taught being the lowest part of the hierarchy and then of course being educated is a higher, a higher thing as opposed to being self-taught. The reason why this is, guys, is because what your ultimate goal is, is to try to align your way of working and your way of thinking as closely as possible to the norm of the industry. And this is a very subjective and fluffy thing, but I'll try to walk you through it as best as I can. You can imagine that if you play a sport, whatever you, whichever sport you play, now there are certain rules for how to play that sport. And if you don't follow those rules, you're not gonna be able to play. Effectively, you're going to break the rules or you're gonna be disqualified or so forth. In software development, there are virtually no strict rules at the very least of how to do things properly. But there are many best practices and there are many standard procedures for how to do something. And if you don't have an understanding of how those things work, it's going to require if you're going to join a company of team members who actually follow all of these rules, it's going to require a lot of work for you to adjust to all of these practices. And you may be doing things in a way or you may have your own patterns that don't really fit all that well with the rest of the group. And that's where a self-taught developer runs the biggest risk. Because if you work in complete isolation and you don't have any peers, it's very hard for you to figure out if you're working in a fashion that may be genius to you, but it may not be so genius to somebody else. And that alignment is the key factor when it comes to differentiating between someone who has worked in an IT company versus somebody who's self-taught. Now, I don't want you to think that that's the whole story because I also said to the subscriber that something that you need to consider is that this risk that you run of being self-taught, especially if you work for a very long time, that risk exists within the professional environment too. Well, not the professional, but the, the corporate environment. Let's call it the corporate environment. Because if you go to a company where it doesn't really matter which size of company it is, they work in a fashion that is vastly different from how the rest of the industry does work. You run the same risk. If you adopt really bad coding practices in an in one company and you go to a, to a company after that and they don't think that the way that you do work fits with how they do work, that's going to be a problem. They might invest in you still if you're able to sell the idea that you can adjust, but this is one of the major reasons as to why some developers 
don't get into a company and some developers call, get fired from a company because there's some churn, like they are doing things in a way that doesn't really fit with everybody else, especially if they have a lot of strong opinions about that work. And that's a whole different topic where you have philosopher developers who are, who are doing the reverse. And this is what's interesting because you can get into this problem with not being able to align with the community or the region that you find yourself in from the perspective of being bad, of doing things in a weird way that nobody really gets apart from you. But you can do that from the master level as well or from the prestigious level, let's call it that. If you work for Google, and let's say that you work in a highly specialized team within Google where they really do have a budget the size of um, the UK or something, and you can put as much resources as you want onto, say, testing or something like that, and you decide that, no, I don't want to work at Google anymore. I feel like I want to move to somewhere else or I want to try something different, and you go to like a small startup or you go to a small consultancy or something like that. If you are an if you are unable to understand that what works for a multi-billion dollar company may not work for a company that has maybe five or five to 50 or 100 people, they, these are, it's different. There's different environments. And this is one of the biggest insights. And I know that it seems trivial and easy perhaps to you when I say it out loud like this, but to really grasp this is the biggest difference between a senior level developer and everybody else. To understand that the context of where you find yourself and the problem that you are solving is the thing that dictates what a good solution looks like. Because a master level programmer will understand that even if you have a solution that is absolutely perfect for Google, it may not be perfect for this little company who has like five, five users. Because the investment into the solution is not in, stand, doesn't stand in proportion to the output of the solution. So what I want you to take away from this is that this notion that there's, a, that there's something bad with being self-taught isn't really true. There is a risk with it, and that is if you work alone for long enough, the odds of you being aligned with everybody else, it's, it goes down. And that's something that's very, it's really only important, guys, if you, if you want to work in a company or if you want to work as part of a team, that's where the alignment comes. But if you are a, self-employed software developer who just works on your own projects and sells them to customers who never really need to maintain them in any, or anything like that, then you can continue forever like you are. There's no, there are no rules for how you should write software apart from the community rules. And that's the whole key here. Are you going to be in the community or you're not going to be in the community? If you want to be in the community, you need to understand how the community likes to do work. And this is the key thing. It doesn't matter if you are worse or you're better than the community because either extreme is going to be viewed as a problem depending on how you play your cards. If you're really bad and you do things your own way and nobody really gets what you're doing, that's a bad thing. But if you're a genius who tries to do things in a very complicated way, who is that where people don't understand what you're doing or like they can't work effectively with the stuff that you produce, then that's another problem. You're you're not in the sweet spot, if that makes sense. And reaching the sweet spot is what it's all about. And a self-taught developer can go outside or reach the sweet spot, just as a person who works in a company can leave the sweet spot due to bad coding practices or get back into the sweet spot. It doesn't really matter how you do work. It's all about understanding your environment. And fundamentally, my favorite saying is, understand the problem that you are dealing with. If you can do that, it really doesn't matter all that much how you manage your career. Have a great day.